Hi, I want to go over with you the Teaching Diverse Cultures lesson that you're going to do. Uh, we did go over it briefly in class, but everyone's doing the project at different times in the semester, and I just want to make sure that when it's time for you to start planning that uh, you review this video um, to help remind you of what the expectations are for the lesson so that you can give your very best effort. So I'm on my GCC right now, so if you just click over to our course, either 203A or B, and then over to syllabus, you will find that there is, first of all, a rubric, the Teaching Learners of Diverse Cultures rubric. That is really good. Um, I'll go ahead and open it for you. That is a really good checklist for you after you're finished with your planning or, or towards the end of your planning to make sure that you haven't forgotten anything. You'll see um, that the student parent teacher or student parent interview, um, actually that should say at the edge, it was cut off a little bit, but um, times five. So that's a really important uh, part of your overall lesson. The teacher interview is also multiplied weighted times five. Um, and the journal resources, because this is where you're gathering all your data, both from journals, which is something that you're used to being at Grove City College, but you also need to use people to uh, generate new information that you can share with your classmates. Um, the PowerPoint needs to be complete, effective, and professional. There shouldn't be any errors on it, so everyone in your group should be going back over it, um, reading it out loud to make sure that there aren't any errors that you missed. Same with your handouts, um, the handouts you're going to give to your classmates. Make sure those are complete, effective, they're aesthetic, um, and they look professional and are error-free. If you're going to be a teacher, you're going to be uh, sharing correspondence with other teachers, parents, administrators, and your students. And so you have to be a model of um, proper English and good punctuation and uh, good spelling as well. So make sure, again, that you either have somebody else proof it for you or um, make sure that you read it aloud. Um, we catch a lot of errors when we read things out loud. Your activity, um, I mentioned on the first day of class, you really want to make sure that your activity is something that um, is super creative and interactive for your classmates. Now, this is different than your anticipatory set. The, the set is something um, that does grab the attention at the beginning of class, and it might be an activity, but the activity that I'm grading you on um, is something that really gives your classmates a chance to um, debrief and kind of make the learning their own. They get a chance to play with the concepts you're talking about and the experiences that you're talking about, the new information, um, and make sense of it in a creative and thoughtfully interactive way. So take some time with your group to really brainstorm as many ideas as you can think of. You definitely want your activity to be something that the other groups have not done. Um, if others have done it, then it's not original, and we want you to go for original. Uh, you also need to turn in a lesson plan that just basically shares um, each aspect of the lesson that you're going to be teaching. Now, this doesn't have to be super detailed. Um, you don't have to implant the information you're sharing into the lesson plan, um, but just share the topics and who's going to be sharing that information, um, and then explain your activity um, and anything else, um, the interviews and things, just uh, kind of plug those into where they go in the actual lesson. And then you also uh, are graded on um, integrating a Christian perspective into your lesson. Um, so just think about um, for your cultural group that you're teaching, what are we called to do by God in working with people from that cultural group, okay? Um, so just kind of uh, uh, share that, and that will be kind of our devotional for the day as well. One thing I want to share, too, um, that is on um, the description, but it's not, on, it's not as obvious on the rubric, is make sure that you have questions for your classmates throughout your lesson. Um, the, their engagement in the lesson should not only be with the activity, but they should be engaged throughout the lesson. Um, I call that chunk and chew because you give them a little chunk of information and then you give them uh, a little time to chew on it. So I usually um, try to have a chunk and chew every couple slides, perhaps, or every maybe three slides. 
Um, once you give, have given them some information, give them a chance to chew on it by asking a thought-provoking question or a chance for them to apply it to their role as a teacher. Okay, so ap now that we've looked at the rubric, let's look at the description of the assignment. You'll notice here on my GCC that there's a different description for each um, cultural group. If you don't see your cultural group here, then please email me and I'll make sure I put it up. Um, sometimes I'll, I'll uh, miss one. For example, I don't see homeless right now, so I think I need to add that one. Um, but let's just go to Arab as an example. They're individualized because depending on your cultural group, um, your questions may be different for your research. Um, but it is a, a full 60-minute lesson that you're going to teach. If you need to go over, we have an hour and 15 minutes in the class. So I don't plan anything for that day just in case you do go over. So don't worry about it being exactly 60 minutes. Um, it has never been a problem for people to uh, fill that 60 minutes. If you are shorter than 60 minutes, you probably didn't share enough information. You didn't give enough good um, insight for your classmates. So just make sure that you're really uh, delving into the research. There are, under the requirements, the student interview, there are questions that can guide that interview, but don't limit yourself to those questions. Um, if you have questions for them that are specific to that person's situation or experience, uh, feel free uh, to ask your own questions. Those are just a guide to help you get started. Um, and the same goes for the uh, teacher interview. Um, also, another good question to research is where um, could if you are interested in working with this cultural group, where would be a good place for you uh, to apply? So, for example, um, um, African Americans, I'll, I'll use that as an example because no one's doing that group this year. Um, I would research different African American schools that are predominantly African American in the U.S. Um, I've worked a lot with a school in Detroit that is a private school for African American students. Um, and it would be a great place to teach. People would love it. Um, there are other schools that are really elite schools in the nation, public schools um, in New York City and uh, other big cities. Um, so just sharing that information with your classmates. Most of your classmates are sophomores, but hopefully you're starting to think about where you would like to be um, when you graduate. Um, it's never too early to start um, pursuing and researching that. Um, so same with Native Americans. Where would, where would one start for looking for a job to work with Native Americans if they have a passion for that cultural group? Okay, um, And you want to make sure with the teacher interview and the student interview that the interviews are a substantial part of your overall lesson. So the information you get from each of those should be in your lesson. Um, and we talked about in class you could Skype the interview in. Students, uh, your classmates will love that because then you give them a chance to ask questions and they can see the person. Um, it just makes a world of difference. If that's not going to be possible for you, then perhaps um, you could videotape uh, the Skype session so that they could still see you interviewing them and see the person uh, themselves. Others have actually audio taped it too, so, so that could be a possibility with a picture of the person. Um, and then the research, we uh, had the benefit of having Amy Cavanaugh come in and share with you where you can find your research. Um, you need at least five sources. Usually students have way more than five sources, so um, that shouldn't be a problem for you at all. Um, and go to see Amy Cavanaugh if you are struggling with that. Um, and then the Christian perspective, again, as I mentioned. Um, the next thing I want to show you is the vinyl portfolio. Um, because I want to make sure that um, when, when you come in to teach the day, you are all ready to go and you're ready for me to evaluate you. So here is a portfolio, the vinyl portfolio that you need to turn in the day of your presentation, actually at the start of class. Here's one from last semester. So when you open up the portfolio, the first thing that should be in it is your um, rubric and so just print that off of my GCC remember it's under the syllabus we just looked at that um, so it should be a blank um, rubric or if you want you can put the names of your uh, team there um, but I can add that if need be then you will have your lesson plan the handout uh, for that you're giving your classmates 
And then this should be filled in, and actually this group um, forgot that because these are my own notes. The reason why I want you to have a handout that's filled in is because I'm trying to evaluate you and add comments on that, and it's hard for me to do that and take notes. Remember that the content from your lesson um, can appear on the midterm and final exam. So um, I need that information as well as your classmates so that I can decide what types of questions I want to ask on the exams. Here is their, they used, um, I forget the name of the, oh, Prezi, I'm sorry, I forgot the name. But they used Prezi for their uh, lesson, and that's fine. You can do that or PowerPoint. But uh, just also include the slides from your presentation. And so if you look behind this, all the individual slides are there as well. Oops, that's not a good example. Here, you can see that they have uh, the information there as well. And then they also included a brief uh, one-paragraph self-evaluation. Um, this is helpful to me because I don't see what's happening behind the scenes. And what I really want you to share in the self-evaluation is what you did, what your classmates did, and if there were any problems with anyone in your group not pulling their own weight. Okay, Because not everyone has to get the same grade on this, but I need to know if there was someone that made getting the project done difficult for you and your team. Okay, so that's just a way for you to share that with me. If you don't feel comfortable sharing it in the evaluation, email me. But make sure I find that information out before you have your grade. Um, it, it really irritates me when someone doesn't say anything until they find out that their grade was lowered, and then they come to my office and say, well, I wasn't in charge of that. Well, you are in that all of you come together and... Um, look at your final product and if something's not right then you need to be assertive enough to say that um, this needs to be changed or we need to add to this okay so um, make sure that you're working on your professional skills of being assertive and um, making sure that your group is uh, doing their very best for this project I think that's it yep okay so just make sure that this is something that I get um, before you start your lesson